Welcome to Rutgers University, Newark, and our Spring Reveal. My name is Tim Eatman. I have the pleasure of serving as the inaugural dean of the Honors Living Learning Community. And I will thank you. And I'm honored to have been asked to serve as your MC for this evening. So I don't know if uh, many of you had the opportunity to go to the six stations around the room where HLOC scholars were sharing their experiences as part of the HLOC, uh, but I did, and it was amazing. Just put your hands together for them if you went by one of those stations. In fact, if you are an HLLC scholar and you are in this room, I want you to stand to your feet and be acknowledged. All HLLC scholars. Oh, yes. Change agents for the future all over this room. We salute you. We salute you. What a special night. What a special opportunity. 48 New Street. Yeah. Some of you passed by it as you were coming up the street. 48 New Street. I love the fact that it's on New Street in general, right? But we are so excited about theming this spring reveal around, yes, the physical building. But when Vice Chancellor O'Brien and Rutgers Foundation team first shared the vision of this spring reveal, I was struck by their astute design sense to celebrate the physical building, but most especially to use this as an opportunity to reveal the HLLC vision. A hand for them. Isn't this wonderfully done? So you should know that the team initially considered hard hat tours, uh, but decided it uh, might be better just to let the brothers get the work done. So listen, say a prayer, beat a drum, do a dance, sing, send good thoughts, whatever you need to do to help us be in that building by early August. Would you do that, please? Let's give a hand to the construction workers who are working right now. Great progress, great progress. Yeah, Ron Bate gave me a tour a few weeks ago and I saw a drywall and, and door frames and HVAC. You follow me? <laughs> right. And it was exciting, so we are excited. Uh, this is indeed a momentous day uh, for uh, our entire university, the HLLC headquarters team. Uh, Marta Escalé, who's an associate dean, Engelbert Santana, who's assistant dean. Yes, give them a hand. Rabia Rahman, who is our departmental administrator, and to Sahai Hansen, who is our director of special projects. So could not be more, yes, salute them, please. We all could not be more pleased to be entrusted with this precious work with these amazing young people. And you're going to hear from Dean Eskelin and two of our HLC scholars a bit later in the program. Um, and there will be several. We will not disappoint you tonight. You came to a reveal. You hear what I'm saying? Is this on? <laughs> you came to a reveal tonight. And there's, there are going to be some amazing uh, reveals. But in the spirit of a reveal, really, two seconds, two seconds. Just find someone close by, maybe your table or not, who you haven't met yet, and just greet them really quickly so we can move forward with the exciting program before us. Two seconds. Reveal your name to them. Real quick. All right. Okay. All right. If you haven't done it by then, by now it's too late. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. 
And we have some very, very, we have some very, very, very special thank yous. Come on, folks. Help me get this thing moving. We have some very, very special thank yous that we want to, um, to share at the outset here. We have had some, we have had some amazing support that has been provided by the following scholarship donors. And I'm gonna say their names and I want you to salute them uh, with applause. Uh, first, we have Keith and Deborah Banks sitting right here. I'd like you to salute them. They have done amazing work in real serious support, scholarship support for HLC scholars. Rob and Nancy Falzone who are also here. Please. untiring commitment, the kind of commitment that makes things go. You know what I'm talking about? I know that John Felicetti is in the room. Where is John? Where is John? Yes, there he is. Let's give him a hand. Yes. So I know John is in the room because when he figured out that he was going to be able to make it the other day, he texted me he's like, Tim, I'm on my way. <laughs> so it's so exciting that we would have him. And I know that Kevin and, and uh, uh, Michelle Moriarty are not able to be here. And we are so delighted also uh, to have their support and the support of Glenn and Mario, uh, Mary uh, Rufrano, um, who I, I uh, don't believe is, is here this evening. So uh, we've also had some amazing funding for scholarship programs and pathways. And that has been received by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, the Ford Foundation, the International Council for Shopping Centers Foundation, the MCJ Amelia Foundation, which created the very first scholarship for HLLC. We have the, yes, let's give them a hand. We've had support from the PSENG Foundation who have helped us found our STEAM pathway. Tremendous support there. The Pussycat Foundation for the Bold Women's Leadership Cohort. Yep. We've received some amazing support from American Airlines which is uh, tremendous, uh, going to help our students with some of their travel needs. And then also, our most recent supporter, the Bank of America Foundation, which has, wait for it, wait for it, which has committed $1 million in the past week to support county college transfers, to support county college transfers, to support county college transfers. So there'll be more uh, revelations this evening, but I want to move on uh, to introduce our chancellor, who is going to come up with a very special announcement um, and revelation. Uh, so listen, if you don't know, ask somebody. Nancy Cantor is a transformational leader. actually brilliant, okay? She's actually brilliant. She's elegant, she's tough as nails. I know she wants me to stop, but I got my back to her and I have the mic. And I have to say that because she's a friend and she's a mentor. And she cares about me personally. And it means so much. It's no big revelation that she is a distinguished leader in the rare tradition of the philosopher, activist, chancellor. I really could spend the rest of the allotted time to recount her accolades, but I won't. I'm going to introduce Dr. Cantor this evening by sharing something with you that she inspires me. I invite you to listen 
to my words, but don't get, don't get distracted by the quality of my voice. Creating spaces, rebuilding places, pushing the boundaries of ivory towers. She moves, she listens, she writes, she wrongs. She moves with conviction, the fight is on. Pushing the needle, absorbing the pains with the freedom and function of a dancer who really knows the winding path she takes pressing for full participation she moves she listens she writes she wrong she moves with conviction we'll carry on our chancellor nancy kent and Jan, his wonderful wife, Janet, who is here. Where is Janet? We go way back, and they have these two amazing little daughters who are now so grown up, I can't even believe it. Makes me feel really old. So anyway, so thank you to Tim for all he is doing to make this vision right. And deep thanks to Marta, to Engelbert, to Sherry Ann, Bill, LaToya, and all the many colleagues going back to the days of Shirley Coyada and the original HLC, HLLC implementation, implementation team. Let's give them a big hand. So they have guided HLLC's growth as a centerpiece of our strategic vision of Rutgers University Newark as an anchor institution, sitting at the intersection of opportunity and excellence in and of our dear city of Newark. Let's say that again, our dear city of Newark. Yay. <laughs> and speaking of growth and intersections and anchors, there's nothing quite like watching a building go up before your very eyes. And that, by the way, is what I do every morning from my office window at 6.30 in the morning. It's me and the massive cranes with huge modular pieces. I don't know how they do these buildings these days going up literally into the sky, and I'm praying it doesn't fall. Every morning I'm watching this, and I'm watching this brave construction crew, and I'm thinking, this dream is literally taking shape. It's bouncing metaphorically, off the energy of the Prudential Tower, right behind it, and you can see right there. Express Newark and Haynes is diagonally across. What better partners? What more symbolic whole could we have than to really put a building right there in the middle, right there in the middle? And this spring reveal is to celebrate that dream becoming reality. And I'm telling you, I'm there every morning, so I'm making sure it's coming, OK? So HLC, it's building, it's student scholars, it's dedicated faculty and staff, is really, in my view, a higher education dream on so many levels. Let's start with the physical space, five floors, a public piazza with high-tech connections to the world grounded right here in this global city. A learning community dedicated to local citizenship in a global world brought to life by the citizens of Newark and students from Newark and from all over New Jersey and the world. And they're all gonna be eaten there in these retail spaces representing global cuisine and parking. 
Yes, even parking. Where's Tony? Okay. <laughs> we could not have envisioned spaces worthy, more worthy to house this dream without our partners who've helped make it possible for us to reach this point. Our friends, our alumni, our institutional investors, and we'll talk more about that, and Tim has said some, who've contributed to a shared vision and programming, and most importantly, to supporting our amazing HLLC student scholars. Another round for them. brought this vision to reality, but Ron Bate and all his RBH colleagues, the architects from Perkins Eastman, and you cannot imagine how much we thought they would faint when we described in those early meetings how carefully they needed to create this living and learning space to respect the multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-generational, and very diverse life paths of our HLLC students the landscape architects from Supermass Studio, who literally have adorned, and I think there's a picture of it somewhere there, the piazza walls with the individual words, honors, living, learning, community, in every language you can imagine that represents the heritage languages of our HLC scholars. How cool is that, right? Right? <laughs> Construction guys that I watch every morning at 6.30 are from Hollister Construction, and they are amazing. But of course, then there's our amazing folks, Tony Calcato, Dave Schultz, Angie Bonilla, and, and just so many more who are right on top of it. And we won't talk about what was there in the ground before we started. That's an inside joke. And speaking of dreams, it's always my view that civil infrastructure, which by the way is defined technically by my friends at the National Science Foundation as large things attached to the ground, remember that? And those modules of the HLC building, they assure me, are strongly attached. But civil infrastructure, most importantly, breeds social infrastructure. And that's what we're announcing tonight. Yes, this civil infrastructure on Washington and New Street is breeding social infrastructure, big time. HLC is building not just a building, but vibrant social capital networks connecting the most diverse next generation of talent with curricular pathways built by PSE&G and Bank of America and the Mellon Foundation, as you heard, to name only a few. And believe me, the student scholars who walk those pathways will be the leaders of our future workforce, the lifeblood of our future communities, the innovators of our future creations, even perhaps the next CEOs and government leaders and cultural icons right here in Newark. Local citizenship in a global world is taking shape with full force in Newark, New Jersey, my friends, with cross-sector collaboration at its core, and with a belief in the huge potential of the sons and daughters of Newark and New Jersey and the world, and their potential to build prosperity for all of us. Therefore, and this is when the drum rolls, and when Tim should be singing. <laughs> Therefore, it is my sheer joy to announce a truly signature, game-changing step in the instantiation of that dream. Our partners at Prudential, 
have made a gift of $10 million. that will ensure our future prospers right here in Newark. And I am genuinely speechless, and people who know me know I'm rarely speechless. <laughs> I am genuinely speechless as to how to thank the entire Prudential team. Charlie Lowry, Rob Falzone, Lotta Reddy, Shanae Harris, Omid Sante, Sarah Kay, and more, because there are so many people who put their hands on thinking about the future, the future of everything we all care about here. This incredible gift, the largest ever received by Rutgers Newark for support right here in Newark, the social capital networks of the Braven Leadership Program, a capstone experience in the entrepreneurship lab that Ted Baker is helping to mount in HLLC, and a pathway to success for the Prudential, Newark Prudential Scholars, all living and learning and thriving right here in Newark, right here at Rutgers University, Newark. Boy, that makes me happy to say that. We truly cannot begin to express how this gift lifts our dream for HLLC. The dreams of our student scholars for their futures, and the dreams of our city and its mayor, if I may speak for him. And he will, of course, speak for himself soon. For the cultivation of talent right here, right now. This is more than a single gift, and that's what's so special. It's an endowment towards a fully sustainable future. Okay, so now here's the thing. This is a fully future, sustainable future that you all in this room will join in growing. I'm quite sure. So thank you, Prudential, for making our dreams come true. Thank you, Chancellor Cantor. Um, that was quite a reveal, wouldn't you say? <laughs> it's now my pleasure to introduce Rob Falzone. <laughs> Vice Chairman of the Prudential fin uh, Financial a Rutgers College graduate, <laughs> class of 1981. Rob has truly helped strengthen the long partnership between Rutgers and Prudential, ensuring that the strategic alliance helps to achieve the goals of both organizations. Please help me in, in welcoming Rob Falzon.
Thank you, Tim. I noticed I didn't get a song, however. <laughs> what do you think of? After I'm off, you can come up. The, uh, I'm looking at this beautiful photo here, and, and, uh, and I'm thinking, this is probably what Nancy came into our offices with when she asked for the $10 million. <laughs> she was like, come on, guys, really, you know? You gotta fill in the middle here, right? So, um, thank you. I wanna start this evening by thanking Rutgers and Chancellor Nancy Cantor. Thank you for creating the opportunity for, for Prudential to participate in a program that is providing a pathway for Newark youth to access and succeed in higher education. Thank you, because this could not have happened without your engagement and leadership. A city's growth is rooted in its anchor institutions. And Prudential and Rutgers are two such anchor institutions in Newark coming together, doubling down on our investments and making a difference in this city that we both call home. Thank you, because creating scholarships for Newark youth to attend the HLLC could not be more aligned with Prudential's purpose, values, and our desire to create economic and social opportunities that will fuel meaningful and lasting change for generations of people, especially those in Prudential's headquarters city of Newark. Prudential was founded here in Newark 144 years ago as a business with a social purpose, to provide basic insurance to working class families who had been denied coverage because of their socioeconomic status. That founding purpose of inclusion and of making lives better by solving financial challenges remains the same at Prudential today. And this driving purpose is clear in our commitment to Newark. In the last decade alone, Prudential has committed more than $1 billion in Newark by investing in education, housing, jobs, public safety, and physical redevelopment projects. And just about a week ago, we announced a $180 million commitment to Opportunity Youth, which includes funding for programs here in Newark like the Rutgers Honors Living Learning Community. We're doing more than ever to champion the aspirations of people in our home city, looking ahead to the intersection of the future of Newark and the future of work, creating economic and social opportunity that will fuel meaningful and lasting change for generations. And Rutgers has been our steadfast partner. Together, we have supported the future success of students and of Newark with both funding and talent. Last year, Prudential was awarded as Rutgers top sponsor of the year. And just yesterday, I was told, we were recognized as Rutgers' top continuous education ed engagement partner. These awards celebrate the work that many employees who volunteer their time to organize and support a broad range of engagement, including student case competitions and hackathons, empl em em employee-led mentoring circles, and women executive leadership roundtables, community partnerships, and the Braven program. I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to those volunteers, many of which are here at these tables here this evening, um, representing the Pru RU Connection, as we like to call it at Prudential. <laughs> and the over 1,000 alumni that we have working, alumni of Rutgers that we have working at Prudential today. And now, we are excited about the opportunity to continue this journey with Rutgers. The Honors Living Learning Community is special, thanks to Chancellor, Chancellor Cantor's vision. As you heard from Nancy, it creates meaningful collegiate experiences for students from the moment they step foot on the Rutgers Newark campus. And with the help of the Prudential Scholars Endowment Fund, 50% of those, stu those students will be Newark residents. And those students will receive full scholarships, inclusive of tuition, fees, room and board during their entire stay here at Rutgers Newark. Well, I gave you the Prudential's perspective, but I want to share with you my own personal story um, because this is particularly meaningful for me. My, for, my father was born in 1928, the son of an immigrant father and an orphaned mother neither of which had an education beyond grade school. He grew up with four siblings, 
in a cold water tenement house flat in a place called Hell's Kitchen. Now that's when it was Hell's Kitchen, right? Not a cool place for millennials to live. The career aspirations for him and his friends went no further than either a longshoreman or a cop. And that depended on where you were on the side of civic experience as to which of those careers you were uh, going to pursue. But after serving two years in the United States Army, he was able to attend Fordham University on the GI Bill. He was the first in his family to obtain a college education. And he graduated first in his class. But had it not been for the GI Bill, he would not have graduated at all. And he went on to a professional career, and he and my mom raised our family of six children. He was determined that each of us would also have a college education. Many of us actually went on to get graduate degrees as well. New Jersey State School System played a critical role in fulfilling my father's vision. I attended Rutgers, as you heard, which provided me with a quality education that rivaled any private school, but at a cost that was in reach to us. With six children, private schools were financially out of reach for our family. Even then, I worked two jobs to help make ends meet, yet I still managed to run out of rent money by the end of my senior year. Um, in fact, my landlord would never have laid odds on the fact that I would ultimately become the CFO and then the vice chair <laughs> of a Fortune 50 financial services company. With our sponsorship of the Prudential Scholars Endowment Fund for the Rutgers HLLC, we are creating new stories of generational success just like that of my own family. And we're helping to cultivate the future workforce that Newark and the world need right now. So with that, I want to close the way I started by saying thank you to Nancy and to everyone in this room that helped make this night possible. And I'm looking forward to welcoming the Prudential Scholars to the close-knit Prue RU community. Thank you. What a powerful, authentic, and compelling story. Thank you so much, Rob. I am now delighted to introduce Mayor Roz Baraka. An educator, an author, an activist, a leader, Mayor Baraka is the 40th and current major, uh, mayor of our home city, Newark, New Jersey. Brick City! He has deep roots in the community, and he is a visionary partner and collaborator for those of us at Rutgers Newark. He's always here. We love to see him. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Baraka. Thank you. There's really nothing left for me to uh, add to, uh, you know, the chancellor and her great words, Prudential's incredible reveal, and they had a soundtrack to go along with it. <laughs> you know, this is a whole motion picture going on up here. Uh, you know, I I'm just part of the credits uh, at, at this point. But it, it, it's awesome uh, to be here. This is an incredible, incredible thing, and ultimately these, these stories should be the stories that are on the front pages of all of our, our news outlets should be uh, the leading story of all of these uh, media outlets throughout the state, uh, throughout this area, uh, because the work that's happening in here this evening is truly indeed transformational uh, and, and generational. Uh, the impact will be felt throughout generations, uh, the work that's happening here this evening. Uh, uh, Chancellor Cantor has been a godsend to this city. You know, everywhere I go, I say that. Uh, her work uh, speaks clearly for itself. Uh, you know, she uh, talks, but her actions are louder than anything she's ever uh, uh, said. Uh, moving Newarkers into the university, the pipeline that she's created single-handedly with the folks at Rutgers in Newark is awesome, and it's probably one of the biggest things uh, that anybody could have ever done for this city, and has inspired other people and given me the opportunity to harass other presidents and... <laughs> 
and other chancellors about their commitment to the residents of this community. I think what's really, really important about this, and I'm glad it's uh, just awesome to see that Prudential understands and sees this as, as well, and listening to the heartfelt uh, narrative that I just heard, uh, understands what merit actually means, what honor represents. I mean, all over the country, people are trying to create these kind of honors learning communities that are centered around prestige and centered around exclusive, exclusive uh, uh, opportunity or access uh, where very few people can get in. And we measure our greatness and our success by how many pe people we don't allow to have access as opposed to how many people actually does have access to this. And I think Rutgers understands that. And Prudential understands that. It does, and, and, it, and it has nothing to do with, uh, you know, making the curriculum mediocre or, or reducing uh, the rigor. Uh, it, what it actually does, it's, put an arm out, it reaches more, it speaks many languages, it, 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 it creates opportunities. It's a universal design, right? The, 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 the architects in, in, in this country have at least been wiser than most of us to understand they have to begin to create buildings with universal design so everybody has access to those buildings. In fact, it's illegal to create buildings that people don't have access to. So they're coming around in education and I think Newark is leading the way of saying we have to create programs and curriculum that is easily accessible by as many people as possible because we understand that the potential uh, that people have uh, is always greater uh, than where they are presently. And how could you be an educator if you can't envision what people could be and you always focus it on where they are, right? You can never take anybody where they need to go if you can't see it first. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down, but this morning, I, I, I do some CrossFit stuff now, and I, I, I said this at the, uh, the children's cabinet. Uh, this morning, I was listening to, while, while my trainer was killing me, I was, I was uh, listening to Les Brown. He was playing Les Brown while I was working. I've never worked out to speeches, but uh, he, he, he was playing Les Brown I was, as I was working out. He's uh, an inspirational, one of these motivational speakers, and he was talking about time. And, and he said uh, that time is equal, that everybody has the same amount of time. No matter what language you speak, how tall you are, your nationality, where you're from, if you're big, if you're small, everybody has the same time. And our differences are based on how we use that time. And uh, I was running and I stopped running for a second because I kind of disagreed with Les Brown for a minute. Uh, and, and, and part of it, I agree that we all have the same amount of time, but all of us cannot use that time the same way because some of us have different obstacles than others. And those obstacles prevent people from using the time equally, right? So I had the pleasure uh, of getting up early in the morning uh, at 5.30, 6 o'clock and going to the gym because I'm not a single mother with three kids in the house and some have to go to school or have to go to work. I, 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 and while I can, I have the luxury of using my time to make my body physically fit, other people may not have that luxury. So what this is doing and what Prudential has done and what all of you are doing and what we're organizing our institutions to do is remove those obstacles out of people's way so that we indeed can have an equal amount of time uh, despite our languages, despite our religion, despite who we love, despite where we live, what our zip code uh, determines for us that Rutgers down the street in the Honors Living Learning Lab has created a space for as many people as possible so that everybody can have the same amount of time and use that time wisely. God bless Rutgers and Nancy and Rob and Prudential and all the great work that's happening here today. I look forward to the success for all of you young people. Happy New Year to all of you young folks here at Rutgers University. God bless. Our mayor, if you're looking for something to tweet, hashtag universal design. How about that? Yeah? Or hashtag time is not equal. That was deep. I'm going to sit with that. Listen, we are in the fortunate position of having.
the Rutgers University president, Bob Barchi, in this room, and he will be addressing us next. Bob Barchi has been an enthusiastic supporter of our work at Rutgers Newark and has made it a point to feature the Honors Living Learning Community in every annual report that he has given in the last five years. Won't you help me to welcome President Barbachi Barchi to the podium? Thanks, Tim. And um, just a special word of thanks to you for putting me on the agenda after Nancy and Rob and Mayor Baraka. Are you kidding me? I'm not even going to try. We were just passing notes around my table. They were mostly death threats. If you don't make this short, don't sit down. So I'm going to make this really short. But just a few comments. First, um, another thank you to our great mayor here for his vision and leadership in taking the city of Newark to new greatness. And, Bringing $4 billion worth of investment into this city in this time is really a vote of confidence for him. And to our, our friends at Prudential, what can I say? This is just spectacular. It's an extraordinary gift. It's exactly what we would expect from our extraordinary partners. It's what a relationship is all about. It's really two anchor institutions, Prudential and Rutgers, sharing a long time and unshakable passion for Newark. And I have to tell you, just wrapping this up really quickly and forget about what's down here, is my tremendous respect for Nancy Cannon. Uh, when we brought Nancy here, I, of course, knew Nancy from her previous presidency and from her other academic roles and her lifelong commitment to anchor institutions as an academic subject. There's a big difference between writing about academic institutions and anchor institutions in urban environments, and doing it, a big difference. I wasn't so sure about the doing it part. Well, I have to tell you, I'm converted. I truly am converted. When she first came to me to talk about the HLLC, and she said, oh, by the way, we're not doing this on the basis of grades or on the basis of SAT scores or anything else. And oh, by the way, half of these students are coming from Newark. And I said, yeah, right. And she showed me how to do it. She showed me how it could be done, how you can identify people with talent and ambition and commitment if you have enough people who are dedicated to spirit them out and to discover them and to mentor them and to bring it along. And you know, she's done just wonderful things here with the Express Newark Project and the Run to the Top Project and the City of Learning Collaborative and um, the commitment to the Truth, Racial Healing, and Transformation Center, I could go on and on. But what she also has done, I'll make this really brief, is to engage a faculty, is to create a faculty that bought into this whole vision and have been out there doing it on their own as well. So when you have Nancy alone, you got a problem. You can handle that. When you got Nancy and all her faculty together doing this, no stopping it. And I think that's what you've seen here today. So I am just delighted to see the progress that's being made. You know, we have something like a reveal every spring where we open up a new building and we talk about the building having something to do with the commitments that um, Rutgers makes to its core values. Um, and those values are student involvement and, and academic excellence and uh, deep commitment to discovery. But this reveal brings on a new core value. I think it really does. It's worth saying. It's empowerment, right? It's the process of empowering citizens of Newark, giving them the tools that they need to take this city forward. It's that kind of empowerment that I think is unique and different. I want to thank again um, Keith Banks and his wife, Debbie, who are here, and Nancy and, um, and uh, Rob for their uh, uh, commitments that have helped to make this possible. I know there are a number of other donors in the room. I'll be standing at the back taking checks if there are anybody I missed. But it takes, this is one thing that only works because there's a shared vision that Nancy has been able to generate in you, a sharing of the vision she has for making this work. 
And that is converted to your generosity. So I want to thank you all again. And Nancy, mangiare. Thank you. <laughs> It is dinner time, so we're going to be eating. But listen, uh, when a, a president speaks, it's usually a directive. And uh, President Barchi said that uh, there are going to be people at the door collecting checks. Is that what he, that's what he said, right? OK. Thank you so much, bro. <laughs> so um, I remember when uh, Rabia in our office reached out to Dean Escalin and Dean Santana and I and said, um, hey, there's a message here from PBS News Hour, and they want to come and talk with you. So of course I got on the phone with uh, Executive Vice Chancellor uh, Sherry Ann Butterfield and put it in her ear, and then she told uh, Peter Englot, Chief of Staff, and Nancy involved, and we were just delighted that some of our earlier national attention from the Atlantic and the Heckinger Report and the New York, New York Times led to us having an invitation by PBS NewsHour to come and spend some time with us. And so we're going to be showing now, as you begin to eat, a, a seven and a half minute video um, that is the result of PBS NewsHour coming and spending time with us to learn more about and help us reveal the national model that HLLC is becoming. Uh, on that note, I'm looking at Ben, and I think we are ready to go. Now we continue our series on Rethinking College with a look at a university that's redefining what it means to be an honors program. Hari Srinivasan went to Newark to see how Rutgers University is tapping into students' passions for working on social justice as part of a special program. It's part of our weekly segment on education, Making the Grade. You know, if you don't accept me, then that doesn't mean I'm not a man. 7 a.m. is early for any college student, and these honor students have decided to take on a complicated topic, what it means to be a man of character. Little men of character are not afraid to share what they've been through. The test of a man is the fight that he makes, the grit that he daily shows, the way that he stands upon his feet and takes life's numerous bumps and blows. The students are part of a new scholars program at Rutgers University in Newark called Honors Living Learning Community, or HLLC. Professor Timothy Eatman is their dean. A man when driven against the wall still stands erect is the man who will win. Honors programs are popping up all over the country. It's a way for colleges to attract top talent. But Rutgers in Newark is trying something different. It's not just great grades and test scores that get a student into the program. It's actually their passion for social justice. It's a bold, imaginative move to um, identify dynamic young people, change agents for the future. The application process for HLLC is tough and competitive. Last year, 1,200 students applied for 80 positions. Applicants are interviewed for several hours, first in groups and one-on-one -on -one if they move forward. Welcome to the HLC Women of Color um, space group, all right? Professor Marta Escalina, Associate Dean of the new program, says honor students are encouraged to choose careers that improve society, not just ones that make money. We're revolutionizing honors, and what that means for us is identifying students who we really believe are going to be change makers and change agents in our world. The way people think about honors um, is really limited and usually people think about SAT scores, but you need a lot more than um, the ability to do well on a test to change the world. Why do we want change makers? Nancy Cantor is the chancellor of Rutgers University, Newark. Look what they're inheriting. They're inheriting a world where on the one hand the economy is in great shape and inequality is expanding hugely. They're inheriting a world where there's an architecture of segregation in cities like Newark and communities all over this country where people literally are living 
in double segregation of class and race. I like to think of it as an incubation space to think about how to create a different world than the one we're living in now. Let's start with the distinction between race and ethnicity. Honors Living Learning students study a variety of disciplines, but all are required to earn a minor in social justice. Pick up the post-its and just put them up on the board underneath the categories. They take special courses, like this one called Negotiating Spaces, Places, and Identity, taught by Professor Escalade. It's about connecting effectively with people across communities who are different. And if I effectively know how to navigate lots of communities and lots of different people, I can be an effective agent of change. How many people have you seen in leadership roles that step in landmines all the time because they're not culturally competent? Stand to your feet if you went to a school, a high school in the city of Newark. On this day, in a class taught by Professor Eatman called Local Citizenship in a Global World, honor students discuss Newark's high poverty and low-performing public schools. We want to develop a critical analysis, right, of what it means to navigate this sort of schooling, what the implications are for uh, the ideology and political economy, and thinking about those things in constant tension. Nearly 50% of the honor students are born and raised in Newark, a city where only 14% of the population has a bachelor's degree. My mission is to empower the youth, to give them opportunities, resources that I'm the hope for them, so I can be the voice for my people. For many, improving Newark is a reason they applied to the honors program. My social justice issue is the fact that black and brown youth are kind of seen as uneducated criminals, and just like they can't be successful. Stacy Tindall is a junior majoring in criminal justice. She hopes to go to law school. I ultimately want to be a judge. That's my ending goal. I want to be up there in the seat. I want to be able to give back, you know, especially to youth. And I want to be with juveniles because that hits home for me and that's my heart. Tyndall is confident she'll stay in Newark. Newark is where I was raised. Newark is where I learned about these issues. Newark is where I saw these issues. Newark is my home. Tyreek Rowland is also an HLLC honor student. He was a basketball star in high school who bombed his SAT test, making him ineligible for college scholarships. After high school, he sold cocaine and went to prison for four years. 2009, I caught a charge for distribution of narcotics. My first time being locked up in jail, I got sentenced to a nine-year sentence. Now, at 33, Tyreek says he wants to be part of the solution. He mentors high school students at Newark's West Side High School. So while I was locked up, I was trying to figure out, like, what am I going to do, you feel me? And how am I going to do it? His ultimate goal is to get a master's degree in public policy and tackle injustices that affect the formerly incarcerated, like laws that ban them from returning to subsidized housing. 50% of New Jersey's homeless population is that of previously incarcerated people. Convictions do not allow you to live in public housing. The law says that I can't come back home because of my history. If I'm homeless, I'm pretty much going to be jobless. So I want to be able to change that law. So we're looking at a construction site here. What goes in? So this will be the entrance to the building. So HLLC currently has 222 students, and the university is building a new dorm to house the expanding program. And while the numbers remain small, the outcomes so far are promising. We had 13 graduates this year. Of the 13, uh, 11 graduated with high Latin honors, right? So summa cum laude, we had eight. Two of them were magna cum laude and one uh, was cum laude. And the two that didn't make it of the 13 were, were just at the threshold. To be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. To be late is simply unacceptable for an HLLC scholar. Good to see y'all today. In Newark for the PBS NewsHour, I'm Hari Srinivasan.